And joining us now about a new settlement plan is international spokesperson for the Jewish community in Hebron, Ishai Fleischer. Ishai, first, let me express our condolences for the loss of Bacheva Negri in the horrible terrorist shooting. What is the current feeling when driving on your roads near Hebron? Um, in all of Judea and Samaria, uh, there's a sense that um, there's not enough being done to stop the terrorists. And as the professor said before, um, there's a sense that there's a lot of guns in the hands of uh, the Arab society. And parts of that uh, comes down to uh, gun ownership, gun, gun, gun control by terrorist elements. And so the, the recent wave of killings have all been with guns. It's no longer a stabbing thing. Uh, it's now uh, an armed struggle. And so all these years of not being cautious with making sure that no arms are going to infiltrate through Judea and Samaria, and through, by the way, the Israeli Arab cities as well, uh, have come home to roost, sadly. And now we're just seeing uh, waves and waves of attacks. And so you, you may have a society that's majority against terrorism, but it's enough that 10% has guns, is pro-Hamas, pro-Jihad, and so, you know, they're shooting at the, the, the society. So this time, uh, a 42-year-old kindergarten teacher uh, w w was murdered. My friend, uh, Ari Gottlieb, is right now in the hospital. Uh, 22 bullets hit his car, killed Negri, uh, but uh, he was spared, uh, although he's suffered serious injuries. So, yeah, you know what I mean? Unless we go into those terror nests and take out the jihad and take out jihadist teaching take out the jihadist infrastructure, we're going to keep facing this. It's not about catching the terrorist at the end when he's coming out to, to kill Jews. It's really about stopping him before he even contemplates uh, doing such an attack. There's still a lot to talk about the subject, but I'd like to turn with you to the plan for one million Jewish residents of Judea and Samaria. Firstly, what would it mean for your area? Hebron is a city divided between Jews and between Arabs, often tense over the years. How would the new settlement plan change things um, where you live? Well, first thing we have to uh, put into our heads, maybe some new nomenclature, I think. I think we want to talk about Jewish communities in Judea and Samaria, which is the heartland uh, of, of the Jewish people of Israel, of, of Jewish history. And so a place like Hebron is where the tombs of the patriarchs and matriarchs is where King David had his first kingdom. And it's now home to uh, a lot of Jews making their life in this beautiful area south of Jerusalem. Uh, there are now 500,000 Jews living in Judea and Samaria, not counting the Jews that live in East Jerusalem, which is another 300,000. So there's a lot of us. And and uh, the Smutrich plan calls for a million Jews to, to live in this place. That's really not even that much more. Uh, it just means natural growth. And yeah, we need more hospitals. Right now, it takes an hour. Just yesterday, I was dealing with trying to get a new ambulance to Hebron because we need a, a fast-moving ambulance to get to transport anybody who's injured or, or hopefully, you know, people giving birth uh, to women giving birth to uh, to the hospitals. And the the nearest hospital is the Jerusalem Hospital, which is one hour away by normal driving. Not to mention if you have traffic situations. So. Uh, you know, a hospital, more universities, more economic centers, even a WeWork type, uh, you know, a, a, um, a, you know, a center for, for people working uh, from home to, to be able to, to work in these towns will we'll make it more normalized. We're also Definitely. working on a plan right now to rename Route 60, which is our central road. We want to call it the Biblical Highway, uh, uh, Route 60, the Biblical Highway. And uh, right now, Ambassador Friedman is going to be, David Friedman is going to be releasing a film about that. So we're moving ahead with normalization, natural growth, and of course, that will also benefit the law-abiding pro-Israel Arabs who live in these parts. Uh, and that's really the goal. The goal is to have economic growth for all sectors that live in this region. Ishai, but you know, when looking at Washington, for example, they would certainly not be happy if this plan goes through. Would it effectively put an end to any possibility of a Palestinian state down the road? And is that, in fact, the point? Oh, absolutely. We are. We are. We always have been, and we are completely dead against uh, the idea of a Palestinian state. Uh, that just means a terrorist state on our ancestral homeland. It's just a bad idea. It's it's what what uh, people on the airplane tell me when I'm traveling. They're just like, why would you give your land away to your enemies? That's just dumb. And we have a tiny country. Uh, we are an armed ethnic minority in this region. We have a, a small country within a much larger region, which in part is hostile to us. And so it would be remiss of us to give away both our ancestral land and our defensive land because it happens to be the high ground 
uh, of our country. So we've always been against the two-state solution, and we, we, are, we have always said that it's one of the dumbest ideas out there. Uh, if some, some people in Washington still hold on to that, well, they should really, uh, you know, have, have a change of heart and a change of mind. Everybody knows the two-state solution is dead. It was a bad idea from the get-go. It continues to be a bad idea. Uh, and most Arabs that I meet say to me, just give me Israeli residency in your state. And, of course, we would prefer uh, an, an, an Israel sovereign in Judea and Samaria that rather always, than the corrupt and jihadist Palestine. That was definitely always a complex solution to think about and to talk about. Thank you, Ishai, so much for joining us today. Thank you.